This building in the town of Bad Blankenburg is the birthplace of the world's kindergartens. 170 years ago, Friedrich Fröbel set up the very first one here. His idea was to make play and activities the central focus. Now the building's a museum. But just around the corner, there's a modern-day Fröbel kindergarten. There, parents and staff fear that Fröbel's ideals could be under threat. It's just before 7 a.m. and the first parents are dropping off their children in time for breakfast. Many parents have high expectations of the Fröbel approach. They need to look after my child, take care of him and keep an eye on him. And of course they need to help him develop in line with his age group. That means every child needs plenty of attention. Each member of staff takes care of seven of the youngest children. For older children, the staff ratio is one to ten. Quite a handful, even for an experienced team. On many mornings, the principal has to lend a hand if there's a nappy that needs changing while the other staff are busy. The main thing is play and individual care because many children have one or two naps and still cry a lot. They're still very small when they come here. It's important to be there for them because they're still so young. Staff members also have to keep a record of each child's development and keep parents up to date. The principal says it's a stretch. The staffing level is much too low to do the kind of really good work that we aspire to. That means older children are encouraged to become more independent. It would be nice if we had someone else who could help out. The children are always getting harder to handle. More funding for more staff, that's what people here would most like to see. But staff say that they'd also like more recognition for their work. They feel underpaid and undervalued. Kindergarten lays the foundations for a successful path to the next stop in a child's education, school. Teachers there also try to do their best despite difficult circumstances. We visited a school with an evocative name. Imagine all the people living life in peace. Those lyrics find their echo here at the John Lennon High School in Berlin. The school's motto is achievement, openness to the world, and a friendly learning environment. 860 children and teenagers enjoy that environment here in the heart of the German capital. Unlike many high schools, the John Lennon doesn't have a specialist field. Instead, the school prefers to offer a strong, broad education. Beyond academia, the school places great importance on developing a child's personality. We decided on this approach because we see no contradiction between personal development and social responsibility on the one hand and achievement on the other. Academically, students here are prepared for the Abitur exam, key to getting a university place. Right now, students sit the Abitur after 13 years schooling, but soon they'll have to take it after 12. Many students aren't happy about that. There's already high pressure to perform. If we now get even less time to learn everything we need to know, I don't think that would be good. School timetables have been growing in the aftermath of a major study in 2001 that revealed Germany's schools fell well short of international rivals. Since then, the system has been playing catch-up, putting more pressure on students with the full support of many teachers. It's hard to understand why, after nine years of English lessons, some students still can't speak fluent English. More capable linguists here can also opt to learn Spanish or French. But despite growing demands on the school and its staff, the resources aren't there to hire more teachers. 
More and more demands in less and less time. Students here have to perform on a higher level than their forerunners in the last few decades. And there's no let up in the challenge afterwards, too, like the move from the classroom to the lecture hall. There are about two million students in higher education in Germany, and there are plans to increase that number, partly with the help of shorter courses, testing times for the free university here in Berlin. The challenge is to educate more students and make universities more efficient. It's all part of the European Bologna process, designed to harmonize higher education qualifications across Europe. The effects are strongly felt at the Free University, one of Germany's largest and one of nine that are unofficially dubbed elite universities. In some technical disciplines, it has led to enormous strains. If I reduce an eight-semester course down to a six-semester bachelor's program, I shouldn't be surprised if dropout rates go up. Shorter courses mean students have to cram more study into less time. They're also getting less supervision with more and more students dependent on each professor. Yet the problems aren't just academic. Many students are having trouble making ends meet. In Berlin, about 70 percent of students have a job on the side to fund their studies. So they have to cope with all this pressure during their studies and they need to work at the same time. It's inevitable that many can't manage. We need new ideas and new approaches. Some German regions charge tuition fees for university students. That's on top of the living costs many students already struggle with. It's really all an issue of finance. But for whatever reason, there isn't the political pressure. That is, the pressure on politics to intervene. There are a few showcase projects, like the Free University's new library by the architect Norman Foster. But they're few and far between in Germany's higher education system. In countries short of natural resources like Germany, education is vital. From kindergartens to schools and universities, the need for change is understood. And there are new ideas, but often the money isn't there, despite the fact that education is a key investment for the future.